<clears throat> now, after talking about microinjection, we would like to jump to the next one, which is the engineered embryonic stem cells. Now, embryonic stem cells, we know that the cells, it is good to know that cells from the blastocyst stage, you would also know, already know what is a blastocyst. It's one of the stage of the development of embryo you have discussed, studied in detail in developmental biology. But perhaps Dr. Asghar Shabir or Dr. Asif Gondal, I don't know, but already, I'm sure you have studied this and you know about it. So a blastocyst stage of um, an embryo, especially in mice, uh, it can proliferate in a cell culture and it will retain the ability to differentiate into all other cells types, including the germline cells. Why do we concentrate on the germline cells? Because we do not want to create only a transgenic animal, but we want to create a transgenic animal that could propagate and transfer the transgene. And if it's not going into the, the germline cells, how it's going to be transferred to the new bone pups? How, can it could be, how could it be transferred from one race to the other race? So that's why it's very important that it should get inside the germline cells. And after they are reintroduced, after these uh, cells from the early blastocyst stage, <clears throat> which can differentiate, proliferate, and uh, including the germline cells, they can differentiate into the whole body, into the whole pup. They are introduced, they can be introduced back into the blastocyst of the embryo. And since these kind of stem cells have many fates open to them, they can become to many fates. They're not totipotent, but they are pluripotent. And we have to wait until the next lecture what is meant by pluripotent. Pluripotent means they can make all a number of fates. They can develop into a number of structures, but not everything. In uh, Animals in eukaryotes, the only totipotent stem cells is the embryo. An embryo can develop into anything. And you know about um, twins, identical twins. Well, how do they make? It's when an embryo breaks into two. So both of them, it's a totipotent cell. So if it makes into two, you will, there will be two uh, twins. And if it breaks into three, there will be three twins. Because the embryo, the zygotic stage embryo, is totally important. After this, the more the embryo, not the embryo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should use the word zygote. So the zygotic cell is totally important. If a zygote breaks into two, there will be two offsprings, and if both survive, of course. That's the case when we see the, the twins, identical twins. They have the same genetic makeup almost. And the more zygote divides, the more it loses its totally potency. So at very initial stages, first four, five, six, seven uh, division, it is totipotent, then it becomes pluripotent, then it becomes multipotent, then it becomes monopotent. But at this stage, these embryonic cells, stem cells, they at the blastocyst stage, the donor blastocyst, they are pluripotent, which means they have many fates open to them. The transgene can be inserted into them. So with the, the transgene can be inserted to them at the functional, integrated the specific side and uh, it could integrate into the genome of the embryonic stem cells. And then these, these stem cells, when they are grown, they are, uh, they are introduced back into the blastocyst stage. It could generate a transgenic animal. And then we will have the pups with the transgene inside them. For example, in this image, you could see the blaster, the donor blastocyst cell. We harvest the uh, embryonic stem cells from this. I will discuss in the next lecture that this is not easy to find. One in, in, in thousands of the cells, there's only one stem cell then lying there and you have to find it out. But when you're talking about blastocyst, it's easy to find. You have injected the transgene in them, and out of like, in this figure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out of seven embryonic stem cells, only one have carried the transgene. Now what we will do, we will enrich, so we will culture these uh, embryonic stem cells so that the number of the copies of the transgene carrying stem cells increases, they divide. 
and then we will re-inject them into a blastocyst and then this blastocyst will be implanted inside or again uh, a female mice and we will wait until the pups are formed and again in this case we have three pups which one is the transgenic founder it's this guy from the image but how do we know this is the question how do we know which one is the transgenic one and this is the question not only in case of embryonic stem cell method but in this case this is the question for this one as well the micro injection how do we know this is the guy that carries the drug gene and how do we know it's this guy there must be a method you should do it we have discussed it in the genetic engineering chapter as well there are two methods or at least one method i would say so you take a small piece of the tail a small piece of the tail cut a piece of the tail from the mice or the mouse and you pcr it or you southern blood southern blood hybridization this is i think we discussed it in the genetic engineering chapter well if we not we can discuss it after the end of the course but of course we know polymerase chain reaction or the gene this transgene that we have inserted we can design specific primers for this and then when the dna is purified from these tails extracted and purified from these mouse tails if the gene is inserted in there the primers will respond and it will give us amplification of our particular transgene and because we will know the sizes of the uh, these, these primers would amplify on general electrophoresis we can check and confirm if the transgene is present or not okay now this is the way how we can find out if the transgene is present or not how do we find out if the transgene is in the germline or or not maybe the the transgene is in the tail but how to confirm that this transgene is also in the gametes in if it's a it's a male it's in the sperm if it's a female it's in the eggs now this is simple mendelian genetics you can um, you can breed a mouse can be mated to another mouse to determine if the transgene is present in the sperm line and this way subsequent uh, breeding can be performed to find out the pure homozygous and uh, the pure homozygous transgenic lines in case of both transgenic and non-transgenic so this is simple mendelian genetics you have discussed you have studied the mendelian law of segregation the fourth type as we discussed here the last and the fourth type is somatic cloning this is somehow you can include it in uh, transgenic animals not really but this can be included into transgenic animals now in somatic cloning what do we do it's a somatic cloning so this is not a germline cloning now you have one organism a you have an organism b so from an organism a we get the memory epithelium cells and we culture them we grow them in culture and then we disperse them i mean they are the, the as we discussed in the previous lecture the mammalian cells are anchorage dependent and they will stick to each other so using enzymatic or non enzymatic mechanical methods you can actually disperse them induce them in the g0 phase we would make them stuck at this phase so that they do not uh, undergo any more cell cycling and then we have an organism b right and this is an oum so this is an egg uh, harvested from a female organism now we enucleate it enucleate means using a suction pipette we remove the nucleus when the nucleus is removed from any cell any cell any cell no matter what type of cell it is when the nucleus is removed it can still survive a few minutes so you have to be very quick now this cell is without nucleus these guys are just random memory epithelium cells we fuse them together by electric shocks we give them electric shocks and some of these guys some of these guys some of these nucleated cells could get inside this oum now this oum has a nucleus from the, the organism a from this memory this 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 nucleus is getting inside it's not having this nucleus 
Now, what we do, we culture this embryo in, uh, in vitro, in the lab, until uh, early embryonic stages. Then we implant this egg into a foster mother. Again, a foster mother means a surrogate mother, a falsely uh, hormonally activated for pregnancy uh, female. And then what happens? This egg, egg acts like a zygote and the new one is fetched. But when the new one is fetched, it has exactly the same genetic makeup because the, the, the nucleus in this egg is not coming from the egg. It's removed from the egg. It's coming from this memory epithelium. So it will be an exact 100% copy of this animal A. Though animal B will not only foster it, but will give birth to it. So this is how the famous sheep Dolly was cloned. We had a, we had a Scottish blackface with the egg donor. And we have Finn Dorset, the nuclear donor. The memory cells were cultured from the sheep udder, and then there was an egg removed from the cell. The nucleus was removed. This is a small mistake in the nucleus. This is nucleus, the, the O is not there. And what happens? You combine the cell using electric shocks, and the egg, the egg receives the nucleus from the other memory cells. Now, this egg has an exactly genetic makeup of a somatic cell from the fin dorset. The egg is from the Scottish blackface. And we culture it until the blood, until early embryonic stages, blast, until blastocyst stage. And then what happens? We, this blastocyst is uh, implanted back into a uterus of a surrogate, falsely uh, pregnancy activated uh, surrogate Eve. And this is another type of sheep. And when this egg will be treated as a zygote and the uh, pup would be formed, the pup is a dolly which should be an exact copy of this guy. And Dolly was an exact copy of this guy. So this is how traumatic cloning is done. This story was uh, unraveled in 1997. I remember still that time I was studying in FSE and I could not understand how could you make clones. I was thinking like it's a manufacturing plant just like we used to watch in movies. So you have a machine and they have some like and then eventually there's a huge organism is made. But later on I found out now it's not like that. It's not that easy. They're just movies. A good thing is Dolly was really famous. But at the same time, a number of experiments were performed by this scientist. And just a few hours after, two more sheep were born. And they were now named as Molly and Polly. And eventually, Dolly got famous, and very few people know about Molly and Polly, though there was a very late, there's a just difference of hours in their birth. And another shocking point is Dolly died young, while these two guys, Molly and Polly, I don't know if they're guys or they're girls, but they survived longer than Dolly. But if you are too famous, then you will be famous, it doesn't matter. Okay, the next topic connected to the transgenic animals is farming, or we also call it biofarming animals. The farming in animals means uh, you have a transgene for a product, for some kind of a product inside, for, for any, it could be a vaccine, it could be of nutritive value, it could be a growth hormone, it could be insulin. <clears throat> And you clone it in the gene of animals, in the genome of animals, so that you can harvest it from them. Uh, a very easy point to understand, an easy way to do it is to have a beta lactoglobulin promoter that is in the memory glands of the animals and insert it there. So when this gene is produced, it will be inside the milk. So the recombinant milk secreted and for example, you could insert this recombinant gene for, I don't know, any growth hormone protein or some other uh, casein, could be insulin. Let's suppose if this is a gene for insulin, what would, what would we receive? We will receive insulin in the milk. It's very easy to purify from the milk. The example of insulin is not going to be very technical because insulin has two chains and they have to be together 
through disulfide, which is through oxidation. But nonetheless, there are proteins which we can clone this way, and then we can harvest them from the milk of uh, <clears throat> a transgenic sheep or transgenic cow. And some of these studies have already been already performed. You could see casein's. So casein genes is alpha one, alpha two, uh, gamma, beta casein. They have been cloned and in uh, cattle and in sheep. And the concentration has been like 10 gram per liter, 12 gram per liter, 3.4, 3.9. And then you can harvest this casein from the milk because naturally uh, the casein levels concentrations are not going to be that much higher. Similarly, uh, lactal albumin, serum albumin, lactozyme, lactoferrin, immunoglobulins, all of these you can clone inside these uh, memory glands of memory gland genes of uh, sheep and you can harvest these, these proteins from the milk. It's a very good way. And there are stories that in the future we will have medicine milk so medicine milk like some of very important therapeutic compounds will be cloned this way and when you get a disease for which the therapeutic compound is already cloned in this uh, memory glands genes you just have to drink the gene that the milk where this gene is in, inserted and you will have the therapeutic compound as well as the nutrition from this milk so medicine milk it is called in the future will come it's at least predicted this is the end of our lecture number 10. And I will look forward to your interesting questions in the interactive session on Wednesday. Until then, take care and see you. Allah Hafiz.